Ozone 10 is here and I want to tell you about my three favourite features. Hi folks, I'm Mike and I hope you're well. Let's do this in reverse order, finishing off with my absolute favourite and I can promise you it's worth the wait. But let's get going with some impact. Multiband compression can be both intimidating and complex to use, especially if you're a beginner. Let me know in the comments down below if you've never used multiband compression in your mastering because of this. If that's true, then I think this new module for Ozone 10 called Impact could really help you out. It's essentially a multiband compressor stroke expander, but without the complex controls. I'm gonna start off by making some adjustments to the low end of this song by adjusting this slider here, yeah, which is for this frequency range here, which is the low end. When it's down below zero, it's compressing, and when it's up above zero, it's expanding. So it's making changes to the dynamic range. Have a listen and also look over this side at the display. You'll see the compression stroke expansion kicking in and then you'll see a release time, a time where it returns back to zero. We all mean to keep from trouble We all mean to do what's right Now, if you couldn't quite hear what was going on there, they've got a handy little control called the Delta Mode here. When you turn that on, then you're not going to be hearing the original music. You're just going to hear what's changed. Now, a lot of you may have struggled to hear the compression there. So let's put it in the compression mode and have a listen now. Now, as well as being able to see it there, you can probably now hear that recovery time. Now, what if you want to change that recovery time? Well, they've got this feature here. It's got, I've got sync turned on at the moment. And this feature, the envelope feature, changes the recovery time, but musically, yeah, it's synced to the music. So if I want to make this much more sort of punchy, then I could move this down to, say, 132 here. Have a look at this recovery time now. How much quicker it is, yeah? And now I'll move it up. And let's put it back in the mix again. We all mean to keep from trouble. And we'll make it shorter. We all mean to do what's right. So this makes it much easier to sort of understand what's going on and possibly even hear what's going on, especially if you're new to this kind of processing. Let's adjust another band now. I'm going to go for this third band here and kind of focus in on expanding that rim shot sort of snare sound that I'm getting in there. So I'm going to push this one up. We all mean to keep from trouble. Okay, I'd really like to sort of hone in there on that. So I'm just going to actually zero this bass end a bit, put delta on and have a listen. Probably getting a little bit too much vocal there, so I'll move this up and change this. There we go, that's what I was aiming for. So again, I'll put my bass back where it was, turn off delta and have a listen. We all mean to keep Trouble. Now there's a couple of other cool things that we can do. Now that we've got that kind of uh, sound going on that we want, we can adjust them all at once and keep the relationship. Just switch on the band uh, control here to lock them all together. And now as I move these sliders, they move in unison and keep their relationship with each other. We all mean to keep from trouble. Now, sometimes what you want to do is make sure that things don't actually change in overall volume. You get the effect of compression or expansion, but you don't want the track to suddenly sound louder, okay? What you can do is turn on this auto gain feature for that. And then even when I push this to extremes, we're not going to start clipping. Let's have a look. We all mean to keep from trouble. So overall, a very straightforward multi-band compressor 
that even you can use if you're just starting out. Ozone comes in a few different versions and I've got links for those in the description down below. I just want to quickly tell you as well that over the coming weeks, I've got some great news about some amazing new plugins. So make sure you subscribe and also ring the bell. Now let's talk about Stabilizer. The new Stabilizer module is intended to make EQing your track much more intuitive, musical and natural. But rather than you going in here and adjusting individual EQ nodes, it's going to listen to the incoming signal and make some adjustments for you. OK, let's just apply it to the R track and I'm going to start off by selecting a genre. OK, I'm going to choose R&B and Soul. That's just going to help the plugin to understand what targets it's going for okay and I'm just going to use this basic control here which is the amount after I start playing my track we all mean to keep from trouble we all mean to do what's right and you could see the adjustments it's making there and of course it is responding to the actual music before it makes those adjustments now we've got some other basic controls here pretty straightforward we've got speed here which is the time it's sort of taking to adjust to the music that it's listening to so we can put up pretty fast have a listen we all mean to keep from trouble let's slow it down make it more natural we all mean to do what's right We've also got smoothing here, which is really about detail, the number of EQ bands you would be adjusting, for example. So just making it more smooth would be less bands and then making it less smooth would be like having lots of really detailed EQ bands in there. Have a listen to the difference with this. We all mean to keep from trouble. Now you may have struggled to hear the difference there, but I'm going to show you something in a moment which is going to help you with that. But finally, let's look at the rest of the controls. We've got tame transients here, okay? So this is about those transients like the sort of uh, the kick there, that kind of thing, how quickly it's responding to those. Have a listen when I switch this on. We all mean to keep from trouble. OK, you could hear it there, just getting a little bit more punchy in that sort of kick and bass area there. Now, of course, you can make adjustments overall here with low, middle and high band. So let's say, for example, I'm not really happy with what it's giving me. I just want the stuff that it's doing to the high end. So I'll just turn down the low end and the mids there. And then as I play this, you'll hear and see it only adjusting the high end. We all mean to keep from trouble. Now, just in case you're struggling to hear the changes which are happening here, I'll just kind of zero everything again. We also on this plugin as well have the Delta mode. When I switch that on, then you're only hearing the differences occurring. So I'll turn this down and then turn it up. Now, if you're still not convinced, let me do this for you. I'm just going to push this all up to the top or near the top there. I'm just going to bypass this, play the track for a while, and then I'll switch it back on. See if you can hear the difference it's making almost in its default mode. We all mean to keep from trouble. We all mean to do what's right. I think that's a wonderful little difference it's making there to the overall tone of my track. There were so many other features that I could have discussed with Ozone 10, including the new soft clip feature in Maximizer and the Recover Sides feature in Imager. But in the end, my number one pick was a no-brainer. Take a look and see what they've done to Master Assistant. For the past few versions of Ozone, the Master Assistant has been a really important aspect of it for many of us, and it used artificial intelligence to get you to a starting point with your master very quickly indeed. Well, I'm pleased Pleased to say they've given it a massive overhaul and I've got to tell you I reckon it gets you really close to an ending point for your master quickly and easily. Now before we actually run it I just want to note that I did play the chorus of my song through this before I started recording this segment 
just to get a peak level. And you can see here on the left channel, it got up to minus 0.6 decibels, okay? So pretty close to the top already. I'm mentioning this because you're gonna hear this track get a lot louder, okay, when we run this assistant, but it's not gonna be peaking. Let's go ahead and run the assistant by clicking on this icon in the middle here. And unlike before, we don't have to fill out any questionnaires to start off with. All we have to do is play our audio and let it do its magic. Let's do that now. Boom, what a massive difference. Now, when it's finished, we go to this page here. Let me explain what's going on here. First of all, it's automatically tried to detect a genre for this piece of music. And if we scroll down, you can see that it's selected R&B stroke soul. I reckon that's a pretty good guess. Now, what's the point of that? Well, what they're trying to do here is match some targets, both in terms of tone and dynamics, for this genre of music. But you can change this. You can change this right now and it's gonna change the character of the sound. Let's do that now. We'll start off on the R&B soul and we'll go up to the hip hop one up here. Let's go to pop. So if it didn't guess it correctly, you can just select that yourself and it's going to try and match the typical, as I say, tone and dynamics of that genre of music. Okay, now we can do things um, on a macro level with this display. For example, if we go to the dynamic section here, you can see it's used that impact module that we looked at earlier. And now we can just blend in how much of it is used here with this kind of macro control here. The same goes for our limiting with the maximizer control here. Now at the moment, it's optimized for streaming, okay? So it's gonna try and match um, what's required for services like Spotify, okay? So that's where we can just adjust that manually ourselves there. And we've also got some adjustment over the imaging that it's applied. So under the hood, and we'll see this in a moment, it's applied some imaging, made things a little bit wider, and it's set this to around about 50% at the moment, but we can manually adjust that. So essentially, this just, just gives you a really great sort of overview control. Personally, I think for many of us, we could be done here. Let's just bypass this for a moment. Listen to how the track was sounding before, and then we'll switch it on. Now, apart from the very obvious difference in loudness there, and remember, we still won't be peaking, we've also got a lot more clarity there, and there's a lot more width in this track. And again, we're not stuck with that, but I think it's a really, well, honestly, that would be fine for me. I think it's done a really, really good job. Now, if you do want to get some fine control, just go over to our regular view over here. We'll just click on that, and then we can go in um, and we can go to each module and make our adjustments individually there, okay? Just as we always were able to before. I just want to quickly mention before we finish here, if we go back to this view here, as well as picking those um, genres for our target, we can also use reference tracks. So we go to this icon here, click on that. We just load in our reference track or reference tracks, and we will be doing the tone and dynamics matches to those, you do have to run the wizard again for that, so it can just learn what it's listening to to try and match it. But again, very, very easy, very straightforward to use. And for me, this gets me very close to an ending point for my master. I love the phase of evolution that we're in at the moment. In the beginning, plugins looked and behaved like hardware counterparts. 
Then they started to look a little different, but behaved in a similar way. But with the most recent phase of plugins, we get plugins that have capabilities beyond any hardware counterparts, and they also have interfaces which suit the modern workflow. As my mate Pete Johns would say, welcome to the future. Now recently, Isotope also released RX10, and you can watch my review about that on the other side of the logo just here. I recommend you do that right now. Have a great day, hey? Eh?